guys, Miss Miranda here again. Uh, welcome to our week one craft along. Grab your week one supplies from your summer reading bag and craft with us. You should have your paint and your paintbrush from your general supply bag. And then you're gonna want uh, a cup of water and you're gonna want some napkins or some paper towels and your paper plate and your rocks from your bag. Now, I am going to start with this design I've also made a few other designs. I'm going to paint this one for you guys. I've got some other ones here, but we'll start with this one. So first I started by painting a base coat of white, and then we're going to let that dry, and then we can go back to uh, painting our rock with our colorful paints. So first we're going to start with our rock, and we're going to start with our first color of yellow. And I like to use yellow for the middle of my flowers. And we're just going to make a little circle and make sure to leave some space so you can do the petals on the outside of your flower. And I'm just going to get that off of there and just dab this a little bit. And then we're going to take purple for our first color. And I like this technique of just taking the paintbrush and pressing it down. And there's your one petal. And you take it and you press it like that. And make sure you dab and get some paint in between one or two of your petals. And then just keep turning your rock and putting your petals on. There's one flower. I'm going to switch to a different color, so I'm going to rinse off my paintbrush. And then I'm going to go over here to our second flower. I'm going to get some orange. And I'm going to do the same technique where you just kind of press it down. You don't even need to move your paintbrush. And keep turning your rack. And keep pressing your paintbrush down to make the petals. If you put a little more pressure, they can be bigger petals, but if you just do a little bit of pressure, then they're going to be small, skinny petals. And then one more time, I'm going to rinse off the paint, and I'm going to get my green, and we're going to make some little leaves on the sides. And with this, you just kind of brush it to the side in between each of the petals. dip another time. I'm going to put the petals in between, or the leaves in between our petals. And there we go. We have our first design. And then I'd like to show you another design that I did. And we're actually going to use the back of our paintbrush. First, we're going to take the front of our paintbrush and we're going to actually do this design. So we're going to take the front of our paintbrush first and we're going to draw our stem. And this does not even matter how it looks because you're going to cover it up anyways. So we just kind of draw some lines. It seems that this requires a little bit more paint. And we go like that. And then we've got our stems. We're going to rinse off our brush. And then we're going to go to the back of our paintbrush. And this is going to give us the circle designs. So I'm going to start with purple. And we just Dab it in the paint, and dab it on your stem. Make sure you get enough paint 
on the back of your paintbrush to make a good dot. And you might have to dab it every time. All right, we're gonna go to the next stem. And the last one here. I just like to go on each side of the stem, just back and forth. And then we're going to rinse off the end of our paintbrush. And we can go back in with the end of our paintbrush again. And we're going to mix a little bit of purple with a little bit of white to make a light purple. Ready here. And you just dab it again. And you dab in between the dark purples anywhere you want. The good thing about this technique is it doesn't have to be perfect. And make sure you keep dipping the end of your paintbrush into your paint. You can have enough paint. Make big circles. And there we have it. Hi guys, Miss Nina here, and I wanted to show you my demonstrations of the rocks I painted. The materials that I used were the exact same ones Miss Miranda used from her bag. So you're going to use your paint from your craft week one craft packet. The rocks that we provided, don't forget you need a paintbrush and water. We have several different options here. I have one is our little rock monster. And then I created this cute little dot. So the first one that we're going to do is we're going to create our little fuzzy monster here. So I have this paintbrush and I'm going to dip it into a base color. We're going to create the color pink. You do not have that in your craft packet. So you're going to mix two colors that you have. You're going to mix red and you're going to mix white. Okay? So what I am going to do is I'm going to dip a little bit into my white paint here. Drag it to a little place area where you can put your little white. And then you're going to clean off your paintbrush. You're going to dry it off. And then you're going to go into your red. And then plop it right on top of that white pile you just made and mix it up. Kind of like how Miss Miranda mixed her purple to get a lighter purple. Now you might need more white or you might need more red depending on how much you put in of each. Try and put in the same amount. So we're just gonna go kind of like with this color here. It's more of a darker red to a lighter red here. And what I did first for my rock is I did little strokes, kind of like how Miss Miranda did with her flower. And you just kind of slowly brush out each way. There we go. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just little strokes. So you kind of kind of like a little shape of a pom-pom. And if you would like to, you can dip, dip off your brush again. And if you want to, the cool thing about this project is that his legs don't have to be the same. My first one I did pink legs, but I'm kind of feeling a little crazy. And I think I'm gonna give him little purple legs. How about you guys think about that? So we're just gonna add little purple legs here and just push your brush down. So it kind of stands out straight and then a little foot. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the other side, just like that. So then we have his whole little body and his little feet. Now, dip your paintbrush into that water again and brush it off, because we don't want any of that color on that paintbrush. And now we're gonna dip into white. Now we're gonna use that um, trick that Miss Miranda did. We're gonna use the back of the paintbrush 
and you're gonna dip it into your white paint because we want to create the back of the eyeball here and just press it down and it doesn't have to be perfect and just wash that one right off because after we're done with that one we're going to be adding another color to his eyes now if you want to be crazy you can just add another color but i'm just going to use the black i have here and then dab it again like miss miranda did with her little flowers now they're just little eyeballs so it's okay and you're going to need to dab again so don't forget to add more paint there we go now here's the fun part what i did for his mouth is i painted it black and if you want to do another color, go right ahead and pick a different color. And if, but if you're going to do that, make sure your paintbrush is clean on both sides. Okay, now I think what I'm going to do for my little monster this time is I'm going to give him a green mouth to make him look very silly. And he can be smiling, he can be mad. It's totally up to you. There we go, guys. Here is our first rock and our first little pom-pom monster. There we go. So that's our first one. Now the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna do our little duck or chick, depending on what you wanna call it. And he is pretty easy. And with both of these rocks, you're gonna need to make a base coat. So paint your color, whatever you want the back of it to be, and then let it dry. And once it's dry, you can continue painting on your project. So what I did for this rock is I started with the eyes. So we're gonna use that backward motion again with the back of the paintbrush. So dip it into your white and make a little circle for the eyeballs. Now this one you can press down a little bit harder to get that circle shape you want. Okay, and then remember clean off the back of your paintbrush because you're gonna have to do that exact same method again, depending on what color you want his eye to be. I think we're gonna do a, just a basic black. And we're gonna dab right onto it again. Don't forget to do it on both sides. Okay. Now, now what I did for the nose is I painted his nose orange. So you can use the brush side of your paintbrush and dip it into the orange. Now you can have a round nose, you can have a square nose, it's all up to you. I did a, a triangle nose and I just did one slight brush stroke and then attached it with another one and made a cool triangle. But remember, this triangle needs to be upside down. Okay. Now what's cool about this project is that we're gonna go back into that color that we mixed and we are going to add cheeks. And you can either use the front side of your brush to do the cheeks or you can do the back end of the brush. It's totally up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm gonna use the back end because it's easier to make those circles and put it right next to his nose. Now you're gonna need to dunk, dunk into it more than once, depending on how much you have left in your mixed paint. But then after that, that's it. You have your cute little duck. Have fun painting. All right, now it's my turn and I have yet another couple of options for you to try if you're looking to make something a little bit different. So I did a shark and I am no artist, let me tell you, because my first attempt looked like this. So he's, he's not my favorite, but I, I learned some things and here we are. So feel free to do the same. If your first rock doesn't turn out the way you want it to, go outside, grab another, you've got a few extras in your craft packet and just try it again. You can always paint the whole thing white and just start over. So don't be afraid to experiment and give it a try. All right, we are going to start with our shark because it's the hardest and I'm scared. And 
we are going to make his, I don't know, the front of his nose? What do you call this white thing? I don't know. The shark I found on Pinterest has a white thing here, so that's what we're doing. Grabbing some white paint here. And now I found a rock that was a little bit pointed. It kind of resembles a triangle and has a little bit of a point up here. This is gonna be the top of his tippy top nose. And then I pointed that so that it was away from me so that the triangle's point is at the top. And now I'm gonna kind of make an outline of that triangle. And I'm gonna start here, not quite at the top of the rock. I'm going to follow the line of my rock all the way down, come around here. I'm just making an outline. I'll go back and fill it in. And I'll come down the other side, maybe round it out a little bit. So after I put my gray on, I didn't have to wait that long for it to dry before I could paint my white. So I have come this far. We'll just do this. Oops, there's a little purple on my brush. That's why you should wash your brushes. So here we are. Oops, don't put your brush back in the purple. Okay. So we're filling it in so that his nose mouth thing, we're not sure is totally white. Because it's a rock, it's not perfectly flat. You might need a little extra paint to really get into those nooks and crannies. Okay, to make my gray, I grabbed, just like Christina and Miss Miranda had to mix a couple of their colors, I grabbed a bit of white and put it in a, an empty space. I'm gonna grab a little bit more because I would need to cover my whole rock. And we're gonna do like Miss Nina and rinse our brush so that we're not dragging colors all over into other paints. We might want to use those later. And now I'm going to start with a little bit of black because a little bit of black goes a long way. So I'm just going to dip in there and come over. Oh, it's purple again. Is this purple? <laughs> well, it's not bad. It, it, it's working. It's fine. And then I'm going to squeeze that paint off my brush. Rinse it off again because I, I feel like I need a more gray shark. So then, oh yeah, I like this. All right, so then you have your very own custom gray color. So you'd paint your whole rock in this, let it dry, and then you can paint your white mouth nose thing. Shark anatomy. I don't know it. Someone leave it in the comments. What is that white thing? Okay, now, here's the scary part, guys. You gotta make a big decision. And you gotta put your mouth in. Now, we all know sharks have a lot of teeth, so it's gonna be a big mouth. So we draw our circle for the mouth, and we're gonna follow inside the uh, border lines of our triangle. And I'm gonna go all around and make sort of an ovally circle thing. Just like that. And now for his teeth. We're gonna make little bitty triangles all the way around. I'm just using the very tip of my brush to make this little triangle. Well, that's not the best triangle I've ever seen. But hopefully yours will be much better. So there's a tooth, just all teeth. He's just got his mouth wide open here. Maybe he wants to go to the dentist. I don't know. Is he having a toothache? Did we eat too many people for lunch? Questions we have. So there's our mouth little shark teeth. And he's gonna need eyes. Now guys, this is where things get weird because when you put the eyes too low, he looks a little crazy. So if you want a crazy eye shark, we can go with low eyes. If you want a less crazy looking shark, you wanna put them a little bit higher, maybe than you think they should be. Maybe you're more familiar with shark eyes than I am, and this is not a problem for you. So, I'm going to take a cue from my co-workers. I'm going to use the back of my paintbrush, dip it in some black. Get a little dollop on there to make a nice eyeball dot. I'm going to make some decisions. Alright, if I were a shark, my eyeball would go... I'm just doing it. There! Ugh. We may have made mistakes. 
And then my other eyeball obviously has to go on the other side of your head because that's where eyeballs go. All right, well, I mean, lessons learned. Okay, so here's the kind of thing you can look forward to. Look at this one though, because it's better. Well, we have three options. These were all painted by the same person. That doesn't seem possible, but here they are. What does yours look like? I wanna know. All right, so Shark is done. Shark has got a whole squad over here he's gonna chill with. And we're gonna move on to our watermelon, which I think I'm a little more confident about. We have a need for some pink. Just like, I think Miss Nina and Miss Mina both use pink. So I am just gonna hop on that bandwagon and throw some more red over here because I need kind of a lot for my watermelon. And I'm gonna add some white to my red. I'm gonna avoid the purple. Not make the same mistake twice. And mix them together. We got a nice, Watermelon pink. Watermelon is such a good summer fruit. Juicy and sweet. All right, so here we are. And I am just going to look at my rock and decide, hmm, which do I want to be my, the top of my rock? I think I'll have it like this, so that this little part looks kind of like a bite was taken out of my watermelon. So I'm gonna paint my rock pink. And remember, they're rocks, so they got lots of nooks and crannies. You might have to wiggle your brush around to get into everything. Painting it pink. And I'm going to leave a little band at the bottom for the rind, that green part that you don't eat. At least I don't eat it. Maybe there's someone out there who wants to eat the watermelon rind. I am not that person. My favorite part is actually the part just before the rind. I like that white green part. All right, so I've left a little band at the bottom so that I can put my green in there. We're going to do more color mixing. This one's, you know, involved. So I grab some green. And I'm just going to fill in my bottom here. I'm not going to worry about leaving space for the lighter green because I'll put that in after we're done. I got, a, I got a hole in my rock. Anybody else out there have a hole in their rock? It's creating some challenges for me. You gotta wiggle your brush in there. If you make it all the same color, it kind of hides the fact that there's a hole. So here we are painting watermelons on the rock. Cool, I like that color combination already. Now it's time to make a lighter green for the a little bit right before you get to the rind. I don't want a really wet brush. So I'm gonna scoop me some green, find an empty hole. You guys might have a paper plate at home that you're using for your palette, or whatever you've got laying around is fine. You could use the lid from one of your containers that we have your paint in. And so I want a lighter green. So I'm gonna lighten that up with some white. Let's see what we make here. Do, do, do. I think I want a little bit lighter. So I'm going to squeeze that brush off, go squeeze the paint off my brush, and go back in without getting the purple. And oh, yeah, here we go. So I load up my brush with that new light green color. And I'm just going to draw a line right on top of the seam where the pink and the green meet. There we are. Grab a little bit more. Okie doke. So now we have our basic watermelon shape. And uh, he's a happy watermelon. So we need some happy white eyeballs. So I'll put a few circles here. So he can have eyeballs. Oops. If you let your pink dry a little more than I did, this will be easier. There we are. And my watermelon is kind of looking up at the sky. I'm going to turn my brush over, dunk the back in here, and give him two little eyeballs that are right at the top of his 
little white spots there. Once again, if you have the time and you can let your colors dry, that works out even better. Whoa, that eyeball got a little crazy. Let's try wiping him off. Oh, I just painted my hand. Good, good time. Here we go. Come on, eyeball. I've given up on using the paint brush. There we go. Little eyeballs. All right, we're gonna keep black on our brush and make a happy smile. Little happy smile. And then we need our watermelon seeds. That'll really show that we've got a watermelon. So I'm just dotting some black all around on my watermelon. That one kind of looks like a nose. All right, there he is, Mr. Watermelon. Watermelon number one. See how much better things look when you take your time? So, thanks for joining us this week, our first week of our craft packet instruction videos. Stay tuned all summer long. We have a lot more stuff coming. Come back on Friday for our Mugtastic meals. We're gonna make some crazy stuff. Come back on Monday to read along with us. And uh, don't forget to check up on Wednesdays so that you can see how our butterflies are doing. Thank you so much for watching. And if you've made this project, take a picture of it and have a grown up send it to us on Facebook so we can see what you guys are making at home. Thanks.